Hi, and welcome to our workshop on new innovations in XRD products from Bruker. My name is Brian Jones, and I'll be giving this presentation. You'll see videos from my colleagues, Nathan Henderson and Christina Drapen. So what I'd like to do today is basically uh, briefly go over what we intended to show at our booth in person. Uh, so think of this as a virtual booth overview. Uh, I'd like to show you the D8 advance for PDF analysis, give a sneak peek of our new battery cell, and then show you some things about our D8 Discover Plus with Iger 2 multi-mode detector. So starting with PDF analysis, um, first off, the background in this technique is a little bit beyond the scope of this presentation. I would love to point you towards our excellent webinar on this topic. You can find it on our website, bruker.com. So one of the things that comes out of, of this method, the experimental requirements, uh, some of the important ones are, are shown here. So data acquisition to the highest possible Q, um, and that basically means I wanna get out to the highest possible two theta angle while also using the shortest wavelength I can. And that's gonna maximize the Q that I can reach. Uh, and that basically means for a lab system, I'm either using molybdenum or a silver anode tube. Um, I want uh, good intensities. And so that means uh, I want good counting statistics. And experimentally, uh, what that means is that I want a high flux or a high brilliance tube. I want very good optics and I want a large active area and fast detector that's able to detect this radiation. Um, and I want high instrument resolution to reduce PDF dampening effects towards higher Q. Uh, and what that means for a configuration like this is that I want a beam that's focused on the detector so that I get the best peak uh, widths I possibly can. And that means I really wanna use some nice optics like focusing X-ray mirrors. Uh, for the transmission case. Okay, so I wanna let my colleague Nate talk a little bit about how this configuration looks uh, on an actual instrument. All right, so we're here with the D8 Advanced Defectometer. Uh, and this system is set up to do PDF analysis or pair distribution function. Um, so what you're gonna need as your tube is either a molly or silver tube, so a hard radiation. Uh, my system is set up uh, with the primary optic as a focusing global mirror. So it's going to allow you to really focus the beam down. Um, coming off of that primary optic, we have uh, what we refer to as a scatter guard. So this is going to help you remove a lot of the low angle um, parasitic air scattering, which is going to, again, increase your data quality. Capillary stage, which allows you to shoot the x-ray through your sample and transmission geometry. And on the back side, we have the Linksight XCT. Now the XCT is our detector that is capable of removing a lot of the uh, bad things that you don't want to see in your data. So sample fluorescence, K-beta, and whatnot. So the combination of the detector and the, um, the scatter guard are really going to combine to give you uh, better quality data. Once you've collected this data, then we can transfer this over into Topaz to do all of your data refinement for the PDF. Okay, and that uh, takes care of PDF analysis. I'd now like to move on to the next topic, which is a little sneak peek of our new battery cell. So here is an image of our new battery cell. It's installed in our standard rotation stage. And some of the new features of the cell um, are that a new, light, compact cell, easy to handle. It now is capable of doing transmission and reflection. Uh, it's reliable in terms of electrochemical performance and has dedicated handling tools and holders. So that makes it a lot easier to deal with inside a glove box and now features full software integration with the XRD system. So I'd like to do a, a video presentation with my colleague, Christina, and she will tell you a little bit about the battery cell. This is our new electrochemical cell. It was designed by the Energy Center at the University of Picardie Jules Verne in Amiens, in France. And it's specifically made to investigate working batteries using X-ray diffraction. The cell is lightweight and easy to use, and it fits directly into the rotation stage of our diffractometers. All right, we've got one more presentation from her. 
Now, the experiments get really interesting when we measure XRD data while the battery is charged or discharged using the potential start. This is why we decided to integrate the potential start controls that are required to carry out constant current and constant voltage steps directly into the measurement control software of our X-ray diffractometer. This software integration allows you to easily plan and combine XRD and electrochemistry experiments. So for example, you could measure data rapidly while it's charging the battery and then collect the longer data sets for in-depth structure analysis of a certain charge state. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at our new products for battery research and enjoy the rest of the show with Brian. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to our new products for battery research and enjoy the rest of the show. Goodbye. Okay, and now onto our final topic. We're gonna to cover both bullet points at the same time. So we're gonna take a look at the D8 Discover Plus with the Iger 2 multi-mode detector. And this kind of gives you a basic overview of what the instrument configuration is. Um, in this configuration, we're using a IMUS microfocus source. So that's an air-cooled source. Um, a, and this is installed on a new Atlas goniometer uh, using one of the new stages. This one is called the Compact UMC Plus 150. And the uh, detector, as I said before, is our Iger 2 multi-mode detector. And this configuration has um, so-called non-coplanar arm. And so these are some of the items that I'll kind of discuss in a little more detail. So first, the goniometer itself. I said this was a new goniometer design. It's called an Atlas goniometer. And some of the things it brings are increased angular accuracy. So when looking at a, a reference standard, our previous um, accuracy had been a delta two theta of less than plus minus 0.01 or even a, a little uh, worse than that depending on the instrument configuration uh, the new goniometer is capable of reaching less than or equal to plus minus 0.007 degrees and that's independent of configuration so a significant um, significantly better in terms of angular accuracy and then it's also um, achieving extremely significant advantages over standard goniometers in terms of a beam movement as the source arm moves up and down. The, that's equatorial and axial are the two directions uh, perpendicular to one another that it can move. And so this becomes a very um, important goniometer to have if some of your measurements are on small samples, um, uh, small spot sizes, uh, but definitely the angular accuracy benefits everything. Now the non-coplanar arm um, is adding a, another axis. So we're adding a third goniometer axis to a standard theta-theta design. Um, and this axis is very, very um, highly accurate. It uses encoder, uh, direct encoders for the resolution, and it has a very wide scanning range of minus three to 150 degrees. And it's basically probing parallel to the sample surface. So this gives you an idea of kind of what the theta-theta the theta movement is, the non-coplanar arm movement. And so uh, when I say coplanar geometry, I'm, I'm basically referring to the type of scans and the geometry that you would use for most measurements. So this is probing um, either out of the plane of the sample or maybe slightly tilted, but it's always in the same plane, re represented by that blue um, rectangle. When I talk about non-coplanar geometry, now the detector is coming out and I'm actually able to probe in the plane of the film. And so I think a video helps to illustrate that. So this is your standard coplanar scanning. And we're moving back down. And now the non-coplanar arm is gonna move out and you can kind of get an idea of what this movement is and where the scattering vector sits for this kind of scan. So it's very surface sensitive, this non-coplanar scanning mode. And it really allows you to see um, interesting things in the plane of your film uh, that can be very, very thin. 
All right, so the final piece of this I really wanted to highlight is the Iger 2 detector. Uh, so the key benefits here, uh, first off, it is a, a breakthrough sensor design. It's part of our collaboration with Dectris, has very good active area, the highest count rate of any other detector in its class, and it has exceptional angular resolution. That means the pixel size is quite small and supports all common wavelengths used in a lab system. Um, but beyond just the detector performance itself, it's highly integrated with the D8 Discover. Uh, that means tool and alignment free coverage adjustment, seamless software integration, and this detector really can uh, adjust between 0D, 1D, and 2D with just the click of a button in the software. It's very easy to use. So finally, just to give you some numbers, outstanding active area, it's about 77 millimeters by almost 40 millimeters. And in that area, I have um, over half a million pixels. So I'm getting a very good data quality there. Um, I can move the detector very close for large angular coverage and move it further away for better peak resolution. Uh, very high dynamic range. So in most cases, I don't need to use any sort of a um, rotary absorber or any type of plug-in absorbers, and it's got very, very low background. It's a true photon counting detector. And finally, that exceptional angular resolution I talked about, this is that 75 micron pixel size, really optimized for best resolution and charge sharing effects. So you get the best quality of data possible. Okay, and that's our, that's our workshop. I appreciate everybody's attendance. Um, following this, I think we have a short, question and answer period. And if you would type your questions into the uh, chat, um, I and some of my colleagues would be happy to answer. And if uh, we spill over, then feel free to come find us at our uh, virtual booth. We'll be in a Zoom meeting there and be happy to answer any uh, other questions you might have.